Now, Phil Talks, I'm your guest host, Jake Miller. Um, and with us today, we have two representatives from the Finley Green Campus Initiative. If you guys want to introduce yourself, go ahead. Uh, sure, my name is Barb Lockard, and I'm one of the co-chairs of Finley Green Campus. And my name is Ryan Smith, and I'm the other co-chair. Awesome. So tell me a little bit about what Finley Green Campus Initiative is, how it got started, and how long it's been around. Okay. Um, Ryan, I think you started a little bit before I did, didn't you? A little bit, yeah. yeah. Uh, FGC I started uh, around 2007, I believe it was started by uh, Dr. Uh, Michael Reed and Dr. Dwight Moody, uh, both of who are still active members of the organization, but um, the idea was to just bring a little bit more of awareness to campus on some sustainable issues, see what we can, you know, drum up some excitement and so forth and gain a little bit of support and see how far we can go with this. Um, we've gained a lot of new members over the years. Um, it's the, one of the few organizations on campus that is made up of faculty, staff, as well as students, and everybody's got an equal role in the organization. And um, we have a whole lot of different projects that we do throughout the year, some of which we're going to discuss tonight. Um, but I've been co-chair, I think, since about 2010, right around there. Okay. And, um, you know, we just... Have fun. It's a fun organization. Awesome. We enjoy what we do. Okay, Barb, so if, if you want, could you talk a little bit more about the things that Finley Green Campus is, is directly involved in? What do you do on campus? Sure, uh, quite a bit, actually. Um, we have several programs that go year-round. Um, one is called Recycle Cycle, which is a bike, very reasonable rental program for $40 for four years. You can rent a bicycle, and that also includes maintenance air in your tires, okay. you know, and um, we have now more than 80 bikes out. Uh, so um, it was always a big hit, certainly with international students who did not want to bring a bike across the yeah. ocean, but now we have a lot of domestic students as well. So that program is sort of saving on parking spaces, um, you know, saving on gasoline and, and our carbon footprint. So that's a great program. We also maintain the sensory garden, which okay. is over by the Japanese house. Yep. Um, and. Um, the Rain Garden, which is behind Gardner Fine Arts Pavilion. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else do we do? Oh, uh, we give support to Findlay Greens, which has the hoop house and does mm -hmm. uh, naturally grown produce okay. uh, and then uh, sells it on campus mm -hmm. and also has a CSA with that. We give support to the Reek Center, which is a 55-acre uh, sort of nature preserve mm -hmm. that all faculty, staff, and students can use, mm -hmm. and uh, we provide support for that. And uh, Ryan has been heavily involved with the recycling program on campus awesome. as well. Okay, so Earth Day is coming up. Mm -hmm. Recycling is obviously a huge push on that day. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about either one of you, both of you, recycling. about FGCI's involvement in a particular project like that? Do you uh, want to talk Earth about Day recycling, or recycling specifically? And how the two are tied mm -hmm. together. Okay. Well, um, with recycling, it's it's an ongoing campaign. <clears throat> Excuse me. And what we've done is we've partnered with H&O Services uh, here uh, within the community and, and essentially uh, they've donated a recycling program to us. Um, they've allowed us to, they've, they've uh, given us large totes, 95 gallon totes mm -hmm. that are located all throughout campus at different locations. Um, they've also given us dumpsters that we can empty those totes into okay. and basically the way it works is um, you take your aluminum and your plastic, those can be mixed together, they don't have to be separated. Uh, and then there's also cardboard dumpster locations. Um, and then if there's paper recycling, uh, they prefer that that's actually separated. Uh, you get the white office paper because they get a little bit higher premium with that right. versus mixing it all together. But they do accept some mix as well. Um, and what we're trying to do is certainly just raise awareness and get more people involved in recycling. Um, there's a Eventually, we'd like to see it become kind of an institutionalized thing across the university where it's uh, basically recycling in all buildings mm -hmm. um, and there's more um, available uh, recycling locations. But um, it's, it's a work in progress. I mean, it is going to take a little bit of money and time to, to get something like that going. But, right. but certainly, um, what we try to do is just raise awareness throughout mm -hmm. the year, uh, not only just recycling, but just um, sustainable living in general. Uh, which then kind of segues into, into our Earth Day activities right. that we have coming up. Right. Can you talk a little bit about the Earth Day activities sure. you guys have? Sure. <laughs> Earth Day early, we call it. Uh, one thing I could add to uh, Ryan is, is uh, through the um, uh, generosity of SGA last year, uh, and uh, we are, have put in three water bottle fillers, or four, 
mm -hmm. over ca throughout campus. Right. Um, and that, you know, saves on the water bottles. There's actually counters on the side that shows how much we save. Uh, so we're encouraging everybody, refill your bottle, yeah. you know, um, and, and we may have a big sort of push for that going awesome. into the next academic year. But our Earth Day activity, we're calling it um, Celebrate Earth Day Early. Mm -hmm. uh, it will be uh, Thursday evening, April 14th, which okay. is tomorrow. Uh, from 7 to 9 p.m. in Kaler Recreation Complex, and I believe we're over on the track side. Yeah. Point, because yes. it's going on simultaneously with International Night yeah. Rehearsal. Uh, so we're going to have a, sort of some fun things to call aware, you know, uh, create awareness of our organization. Okay. And a uh, recycling relay obstacle course. So they'll be going through things like, um, you know, plastic bag limbo and a hula yeah. hoop carpooling. We've got some prizes. Uh, you know, everybody that goes through the course will get a chance. We're going to be giving out candy. And we had a bicycle obstacle course uh, in the fall, and it went over really, say. yeah, it was very popular. So hopefully this will be just a fun, popular kind of event. Fantastic. 7 o'clock again at Kaler. Awesome. Yeah. And that's April and 14th. April 14th. Okay. And just for clarification, I believe it's, since there's two indoor tracks, it's going to be the indoor track that does not have the rock wall. Okay. Isn't that? That's yeah, correct. I think uh, they've moved it the over opposite. by the water bottle filler. Yep. Yeah, yeah, where the water bottle filler is. Okay. Right. Awesome. So what, when you guys talk about, and, and I, I know because we were directly involved in the bicycle obstacle course that you had in the mm -hmm. fall, um, and now you talk about another obstacle course plus several other different activities for students to do, um, what does a meeting look like for you guys as a group when you sit down to discuss how you're going to draw people to your event? It's very casual. <laughs> and early. <laughs> yeah. We meet at 8 a.m. So. Not all that structured. Um, no, it's, um, well, like I said, it, uh, not everybody that's involved in the organization is at all the meetings. You know, just like any meeting, you're going to get some people some days and others other days. Uh, but basically, um, you know, there's certain, there's certain projects that we're working on throughout the year, and there's certain activities that we'd like to see implemented. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times just, hey, what do you think about this idea? This is something that I think eventually we'd like to do. We don't necessarily have a date in mind that mm -hmm. we want to implement this or, or have this event. Uh, sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. But we're, we're looking at ideas where what could we do differently that could get us a little bit more active participation among the students. Mm -hmm. You know, what can we do differently that would get us a little bit more buy-in amongst faculty, staff, administration, so on and so forth. So uh, really, it's a, a lot of it has to do with building relationships across campus, really. Right, for sure. Uh, gaining trust and support from individuals that are kind of in the decision-making progress. You know, if, if there's something that we want to do, we want to do a good job. We don't want to fall flat on our face and look like a bunch of fools in front of everybody, obviously, because then when we've got something else we want to do, it's not going to, it's not going to work out, right? So, um, you know, it's something that we're, that we're passionate about, um, and oftentimes it's just kind of an exchange of ideas and mm -hmm. go over some activities that we've done and talk about new ideas that, may, that we might want to implement. So what I'm trying to get at is that this is basically a large brainstorming operation, and you welcome anyone and everyone who wants sure. to participate and get involved. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The yeah. more ideas, the better. The more True. the more people that want to get involved, the better. Okay. Absolutely. Do, you, do either of you have any idea about the total number of participants that you have so far, members? You know, off and on, it depends. If, if we have an event, we, for instance, I, I should give credit for the, the uh, April 14th event, um, two student organizations, the Wilderness Club and also OESHO, which is um, environmental yeah. safety and occupational health students, are involved in that and they're going to be working with that and they've okay. attended a few meetings so if we have something coming up mm -hmm. we get more participation mm -hmm. um, I don't know as we keep like a membership list role there's mm -hmm. there's you traditionally maybe eight to ten people that show up for our monthly meetings okay. but we reach out from there I, I get emails frequently from mm -hmm. people who want to become involved and you know we just kind of tell them you know we've got this meeting coming up we try to have a meeting once a month mm -hmm. um, but obviously you know we're not going to twist arms. If you can't make it, you can't make it. We'd love to have you if you can. Uh, but there's a listserv uh, that these emails go out to, and there's probably there's probably about 30, 35 people total on the listserv. Don't yeah, quote me on that, but it's an okay. approximate number. Um, and you know, some people uh, some people probably haven't been quite as involved over the years. Um, that may not necessarily consider themselves an active member of FGCI, but we still keep them in the loop of mm -hmm. what's going on in case they want to participate in something. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, there's, I'd say, yeah, Barb's 8 to 10 on mm -hmm. average on show up basis, on a regular right. basis. Okay. Right. Yeah. 
So for a student who's watching this or a faculty member or staff member who wants to get involved, they've got the seed planted, mm -hmm. FGCI sounds like something they want to get involved in. Mm -hmm. What's their first step? I'd say contact one of us. Yeah, absolutely. Dr. Ryan Smith or okay. me, Barb Lockard, Lockard at Finley.edu. Or R. Smith at Finley.edu. Okay. And yeah. uh, we will connect them. Again, you don't have to come to the 8 o'clock meeting. I know students are crazy about that hour. Uh, but we will definitely get you involved, okay. I think. Fantastic. Um, yeah. Um, and, and let's say someone wants to, they're, they're super interested, gung-ho about this idea. How can they best serve FGCI? Um, my oh, thought volunteering is volunteering events, particularly. Meetings. My thought is if it's particularly a student, you know, spread the word to your friends. Right. Okay. You know, uh, reach out to other people and say, hey, listen, you know, this is important and this is important because. Mm -hmm. Da, 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 da. Uh, and we definitely would like your support one way or the other. Mm -hmm. You know, help come to the meetings, get involved, show up at activities, you know, recycle, you know, just do something, some basic activities like that. Um, and, you know, we would, we would love for the students to have a little bit more of a voice. We get a lot of, we get, we get a lot of students that contact us throughout the semester and say, hey, I'm kind of interested in this. Um, but but we really need a collective push from the students, mm -hmm. you know, to really move the organization forward. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, administration listens to us and they've been supportive and we appreciate that. But administration is really going to listen to the students. If the students say, hey, you know, we really need to take a more active approach towards sustainability on campus. Right. We need to have an institutionalized recycling campaign where right. it's in all the buildings, it's in all the dorms, it's in the, you know. Um, I think administration is much more likely to listen to the students mm -hmm. because, you know, the students are what <laughs> we're here for. Right. So this is, it's an, an initiative. It's an ongoing process. Right. Correct. Something that you want to be sustainable and grow, uh, scalable over time. Right. Absolutely. Um, and obviously participation from students is key in that. Mm -hmm. um, so do you guys have flyers around campus or anything that, that might be visual for, for students to keep an eye out? I know you talked about the blue dumpsters. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. how they know your presence is on campus. Um, we do have web pages. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to affinley.edu and go to about UF, you will see sustainability um, okay. as one of the links, and that will give you all of uh, it will give you contact information, but also all the initiatives that we're doing on campus currently. Uh, we do put up flyers. We're on the TV display uh, when we have special events. Okay. Uh, but again, I think just just contacting one of us and we'll we'll connect you. We would love to have more students involved, um, and I think yeah. you'll see next academic year you'll see a big push toward that. Probably. Awesome, right? Is there anything else you guys would like to mention for the good of the cause? Um, I'd like to thank um, Amy Depew, who is one of our members and has organized the uh, April 14th event. And Absolutely. please come. You know, we should encourage people to come. Uh, She's done a great job on that. We're also having a tree planting at the same time, seven o'clock. Okay. Thursday, April 14th, uh, just to the left of the Davis Street building, mm -hmm. uh, as you face it. Uh, so it is uh, sort of Arbor Day and Earth Day okay. <laughs> early. Fantastic. Well, we appreciate you guys for coming out and, and telling us more about FGCI. Thank you. Um, I agree with you. I think it's something that students definitely need to get involved in. And it's a great, a great thing to place on a resume to, to show oh, that definitely. you're part of a group that has that initiative, not only in what it's doing, but in its name itself. Right. So um, we appreciate you reaching out to yeah, us. No you. problem. We'll continue to do it. Awesome. Thank you. So that's going to wrap it up for this week's edition of Phil Talks, um, FGCI. Check them out. You heard where their, their website is. You've got emails. Um, so as a student, if you're interested in getting involved, go ahead and reach out to those, those people, and we'll see you right back here next week. Thank you. Awesome.